in section 3.4, and we talk about zero the polynomial function. And this uh, section actually relates um, very similar to the last section, 3.3. .3. So you're going to see a lot of similarities. We use a lot of synthetic division in this um, section. Okay, let's recall a couple things. If um, f of x equals x plus 3 times 2x minus 1 times x minus 5, the zeros are negative 3, 1 half, and 5. Okay. I got the 1 half because I know that 2x minus 1 equals 0. Solve for x, I get 2x equals 1, so x equals 1 half. Okay. So we know how to find zero. We've done that before. So now we have something called um, the rational zero theorem. It's on page 377 if you had a book, but you don't really need a book in this class. Um, the possible rational zeros are the factors of the constant term. divided by the factors of the lean coefficient. Okay, so using the, the factor theorem, example one, list all the possible rational zeros of f of x equals negative four, x to the fourth plus 3x squared plus 4. Okay, so the factors of the lean co um, constant term the factors of the constant term, well, here's the constant term 4. The factors of 4 are going to be, let's uh, do the opposite side here. we we'll do possible rational zeros. We'll go ahead and abbreviate possible rational zeros, PRZ, and equal the factors of constant term, which is factors of 4, divided by the factors of the leading coefficient. The leading coefficient is going to be the negative 1 right here. Factors of 4 are going to be plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Because 1 times 1 is 1 times 4 is 4, 2 times 2 is 4. And I made a plus or minus because I could have a negative 2 times negative 2 would be 4. Okay. And then the factors of negative 1 are going to be plus or minus 1. Now when we divide them out, we're going to divide this out, and this out, and this out. So I get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Okay. So later on, we're going to actually see that these are the possible rational zeros of this, uh, this function. But later on, we'll see that just plus or minus 2 is going to be it. Okay, but that's later on. Okay, so on your own, go ahead and pause the video. And on your own, I want you to go ahead and do... Um, this problem here lists all the possible rational zeros of this function. I'll go ahead and pause the video, and you can go ahead and pause the video and check your answer in just a minute. Okay, so when you just found your own problem, um, you should have the factors of negative 6, which is your constant term, and factors of 1, which is your leading um, coefficient. So I get factors of negative 6 are up here on top, factors of 1 are here on the bottom, and when I divide that into each, I get this as my answer. Go ahead and do example two with all the rational, possible rational zeros of this function. So the possible rational zeros are going to be the factors of negative two divided by the factors of 15. I get plus or minus one, plus or minus two. The factors of 15 are going to be plus or minus one, plus or minus three, plus or minus five, and plus or minus 15. Now let me make sure that each of these numbers on top get divided by this. So there's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to go ahead and take this and this and divide into this, this and this and divide into this, and then so on. So make sure you don't miss anything. So I'm going to do plus or minus 1 divided by 1, which is plus or minus 1. This divided by this is going to be plus or minus 2. Now I'm done with um, this right here. So I do plus or minus 1 divided by uh, plus or minus 3, which is going to be plus or minus 1. Third. Take this divided by this, so I get plus or minus two thirds. Now I'm done with this. I'm going to take these two and divide it into plus or minus five. So I get plus or minus one fifth and plus or minus two fifth. And then the last one is going to take these two and divide it into the plus or minus fifteen. So 
you know, a bunch of polynomial zeros, and a lot of them are fractions. And again, we can have uh, fractions as, as zeros because we've had them up here. Okay. So again, we have another on your own problem on top page of 130. Go ahead and pause the video and try this one on your own, and list all the polynomial zeros of this. Now, when you check your answers, your answers might be out of a different order than mine. As long as you have all of them listed, you all have the correct answer. Okay, so go ahead and pause your video. Okay, so here are the uh, <coughs> positive rational zeros of this function. I have one, two, three, four, five, six of them, and here they are listed. Okay, let's go to example three, and now we're going to take it one step further. Once we know all the positive rational zeros of a polynomial function, then we can use that to actually find the zeros of the polynomial function. And uh, so let's go ahead and do example three. Find all the zeros of this function. Again, we don't know what would, would be possible, so we're going to go ahead and do the possible rational theorem. And again, before I even start this problem, if I were to try to find the zeros of this by the grouping method, or factoring and then um, the zero product rule, it would not work. So I have x squared, I get x plus 2. And here I pull a negative 1, I get 5x plus 6. Remember I said if you um, try to um, factor four terms, it'll work about 95% of the time. Well, this is one case where I try to factor it, and these two terms don't match, so I cannot factor this. I cannot use the zero factor rule, zero prod rule. So that's when we come to this, um, to finding the possible rational zeros, and then actually doing something, and doing synthetic division. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So possible rational zeros, so PRZ, we have factors of negative 6 divided by the factors of 1, which gives me plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6, all over plus or minus 1. So I get plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, and plus or minus 6, because all of these divided by plus or minus 1, which gives you that top half. So now we know that there are a bunch of positive rational zeros. We have 1 could be a positive rational zero, negative 1 could be 1. Positive 2, negative 2. Positive 3, negative 3. Positive 6, and negative 1. We're going to test, you can test whichever one you want. I would just try to go in order. So I'm going to test 1. If 1 was a, a rational zero of this polynomial function, then 1 is going to actually divide into that polynomial function evenly. I test 1, I'm going to do synthetic division. I get 1, 2, negative 5, and 6. I pick all the coefficients <coughs> of the function up here. And when I go ahead and leave divide in there evenly. Okay, I get a remainder, so no. So I'm going to test, you can either test negative 1 next or test 2. I'm going to test 2. So I get 2, so I have 1, 2, negative 5, and 6. I could have tested negative 1 if I really wanted to. Oops, I made a mistake here. I should have had negative 6 up here, my bad. Let me just touch that now. This should be negative 8. And I forgot the negative 6 here. Okay. So we're going to erase it and start all over. So I'll be start all over here. Okay, so I'm testing 1. So I have 1. I have 1, 2, negative 5, and negative 6. That wouldn't work. We want to have 0 here. I test 2, again, I could test negative 1, so I have 1, 2, negative 5, and negative 6. So I drop down to 1, I get 2, 4, 8, 3, negative 6, I mean 6. I get 0 here, and that's what we want. That means, this tells us 2 is a 0 of the function. Okay. So if 2 is 0 of that function, that means one of the factors of that function should be x minus 2. Okay. And the rest of that function would be given with these coefficients here. So I have x squared plus 4x plus 
plus 3. So by doing this, I can now find one factor of this without using the grouping process. But now I'm just going to go ahead and factor this by the AC method or by trial and error. Okay, okay. This times this would give me x squared. This times this would give me 3x. And this times this would give me 1x, which is 4x. This times this is 3. Okay. So now my zeros are, now I can see my zeros are 2, negative 1, and negative 3. If I want to get one step further on the test, I'll ask you what the um, intercepts are. The x-intercepts are 2, 0, negative 1, 0, and negative 3, 0. I think in your homework, they don't ask you for this, but I will ask you for this on the test. So you can take it one step further and give me the actual point for the x-intercept. And notice how... Um, I found that 2 is 0 by using that division, but the other ones are negative 1 and negative 3, and those are in that list right here. Here's negative 1, and here is the negative 3. So we, if we had tested those, then the synthetic division would have worked. If you test 6 or negative 6, this would not have worked. Okay. So again, on the exam, I don't know which one you're going to test. You might test um, 2 right away and get 1, and you would get it right away. But uh, it's up to you. So on the next one on your own, I want you to go ahead and um, find all the zeros of this um, polynomial function. Start with looking at uh, possible rational zeros and then testing a few of them with synthetic division. So go ahead and pause the video and finish this problem. Okay, so on your own problem, here are all my possible rational zeros right here. And I went ahead and tested the positive one first. And it actually worked on the first try. That was the first zero I got. So, um, because of that, I didn't have very much work to do for that. And I got my first factor to be x minus 1 because if 1 is 0, then it must have come from x minus 1. And this, this right here helped me form an x factor. I factor this more. And I got 1, negative 4, negative 5 as my zeros. And here are the actual x intercept. Now, if you had tested um, negative 1, that would not have worked. Tested 2 or negative 2, that would not have worked. 4 would not have worked, but negative 4 would have worked. And so some of you might have tested um, negative 4. Let me show what that would have looked like. So you would have this. And you would have um, 1, 8, 11, and negative 20. 1, 8, 11, and negative 20. And you get 1, negative 4, which would be 4. Negative 16, which would give you negative 5, positive 20, and 0. So yeah, that would work. So x um, equals negative 4 to 0, well, that would have come from x plus 4. That's really important to know. If x minus 4 is a 0, then it must have come from x plus 4. And you would have had x squared plus 4x minus 5. And then you still get the same answer. You would still get, this would be x plus 1. Actually, x plus 1, x minus 5 would be wrong. That would be x minus 1x uh, plus 5 equals 0 because that would give you x squared would give you 5x minus 1x is 4x and I get negative 5. Good. So my zeros are negative 4, 1, and negative 5. I get the same answer here that I got up here. So it didn't matter which one you tested as long as the one you test was the correct 0. Okay, so this next example, um, it's the wrong example, and so I'm going to have you copy down the right example, and then we'll finish this up in just a second. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and recopy this, or just cross it off. I want you to do f of x equals 2x to the third minus 5x squared plus x plus 2. That's the one I want you to work on. So we'll cross that one off. That was a typo on the publisher part. And I'm getting ready to run out of time on this video, so that'll be the first thing we do in the next video. Okay, so go ahead and copy this down, and then we start the next video, we'll do this example.